Okay, now S5, I'm running out of room here. Uh, let's do it over here. S, and I don't want to use blue. S5 then, and I think this is where people, also where people were mistaking. S5 is simple, right? Well, the question is, well, what is S5? S5 is nothing more than the combination of my modal axiom, um, if A is necessary, then A, right? Which is here, if A is necessary, then A. So S5 is the combination of M plus 5. Right? So S5 becomes that combination of M plus 5. And what is that? That is if A is necessary, then A, and this is, uh, and this is M. And then 5 is what? Um, 5 is if A is possible, right? then, 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 then A is necessarily possible. Right? And this is 5. Right? So M is if A is necessary, then A. And then 5 is if A is necessary, then A is necessarily possible. Okay. Now, what, what, can we make, what sense can we make of this, right? Um, well, the same thing that we did here is what we're going to attempt to do here. And the question is, if we are making the claim that A is possible, all right? So this thing could happen. Uh, if A could happen, then we're saying it is the case that A is necessarily possible. Well, all that S5 is saying in an attempt in a system of um, simpli simplification, all S5 is saying is why do we need to add um, these uh, redundancies again in, in our operations, right, in our operators? Um, why not just look at the place of the last operator, the last operator in our string, so S5 is going to make the claim that the last operator, OPE, operator in our so all S5 is going to say, um, S5 is going to say as a combination of M plus 5 that if we're talking about um, this this operator um, A being possible, the possibility of A, so if A is possible, then um, A is necessarily possible. We don't necessarily need this necessary, right? Because why? Because the last operator in our string is the most important. We're just concerned with basically the last operator in the string, right? Since the last operator in this particular string is possibility, right, is that the fact that A is possible, and, and, and think about this, right, just, in, just like logically. If I say that it is possible, if I say that it is possible that I might give you um, a chocolate ice cream cone, if I say it is possible that I might give you a chocolate ice cream cone, then obviously it's necessarily possible that I might give you a chocolate ice cream cone, right? It's necessarily the case that it's possible that I might give you an ice cream cone. Why do I need the necessary part, right? Because it's, 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 it's not adding anything. As we said before in S4, the addition of um, um, similar operators doesn't add anything. If it's necessarily necessary, I haven't added anything other than necessity. If it's necessarily possible, I haven't added anything other than the possibility that I already have. So what we see from S5 is that I can get rid of this necessity, right? So now I can bracket this. I can get rid of uh, I can get rid of this necessity and just keep the possibility, right? Right. I can then say that if A is if A is possible, uh, or sorry, A is possible if A is possible, right? Because this being necessarily possible, I haven't added any new meaning to the claim. Um, just like I haven't added added any meaning new meaning to the claim that it is necessarily necessary. Um, and in S5, what I'm doing, in S5, what I'm doing is I'm, com <coughs> I'm com combining um, uh, my modal axiom here with my, um, my uh, system of simplification here, and I'm realizing that I just need to keep emphasis on the last uh, operator. That last operator is going to tell me what uh, is important, and I can simplify this by saying that A is... Um, a is possible if A is possible, right?
so um, that about covers it. Um, so we did S4 and S5. We got our distribution. We have our substitution. We have our main axiom. We have our simplifications. Um, and we know what the symbols mean. So um, I hope uh, that made some sense. I apologize if I went too quickly. Um, but it, I, it, again, it's not to be uh, intimidating. It shouldn't be intimidating. It's just a matter of understanding what the symbols mean, right? Um, the diamond means possible. The square means necessary. Um, the substitution rule isn't really that difficult. You know, this is like sort of math that you learn in high school or middle school where you just sort of distribute the square to both parts, right? And then that makes sense. Um, this, this makes sense insofar as we're saying if something is, uh, if Q is necessary, if and only if, um, it's non-existence. This thing's non-existence isn't possible, right? This thing's non-existence isn't possible. That's what that means. This thing is possible if um, its non-existence isn't necessary, right? This thing is possible if its non-existence isn't necessary. That's all that means, right? All this is saying is that this thing is necessary. If this thing is necessary, then then A has to be the case. We now this is where, is where it gets a little bit confusing with S4 and S5 and um, um, sort of the systems 4 and 5, but I've gone through and explained that just now, so I'm not going to go do that again. Just rewind the video and, and get an understanding of it. Basically, all S4 and S5 are, at a very introductory level, is an attempt to reduce redundancy, uh, or eliminate, rather, redundancy into, in S4 and in S5 to place emphasis on the last operator of the string. Uh, and that way I don't have to get confused, right? I just look at the last operator of the string. I know where the emphasis is for that string. Uh, and that's basically it. So uh, with that being said, um, this was my introduction to modal logic. I hope that it's informative. I hope that you've learned something. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Thank you and have a good day.